Hi guys, Adam here from Tech Squad, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a video on why I still use this phone in 2017. This is my backup Android phone I use for not using my iPhone, I'll mainly use this. I go back to it, it's such a nice phone. For people who don't know, this is the LG G3, it came out in 2014. Um, so it is a bit of an old phone, but there are many things I still like about it. Um, one of the things being, it has a headphone jack. Unlike the Moto Z, which has no headphone jack, you get it to focus. There's no headphone jack. So the iPhone 7, your HUC phones, and also the essential phone, which is missing a very big essential feature in my mind. Um, so if you just go over basic specs of it, it is a quad HD 5.5 inch display, which is L which has LG's true HD IPS LCD display. I am reading this off my computer over here. Um, it has Android 6.0 as a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 quad core at 2.5 GHz and a G Note 330 for the graphics. Um, the model I have has 16 gigs of internal storage and 2 gig of RAM. It does have an SD card slot if you just pop over and back, which is a kind of phone which um, is what I like, it's pop off back. It does have wireless charging and NFC. So up here you have your micro SIM and your micro SD card slot, which has up to 256 gigabytes of storage. You have a removable 3000 mAh battery, which is removable, can I say. I think like the last flash flagship phone maybe to have a removable battery could have been the LG V20. And that also the metal, it was a metal back and removable. This phone isn't metal, it is plastic all the way around. Um, it's got, if you look at it like this though, it's got a nice curve back, like a brushed metal look to it. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So if you just go over the phone, basic, the basic stuff of the phone. So as I said, it has a Qualcomm, eight, Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 a quad core. Um, the Geno 330 graphics has a 5.5 inch Quad HD display. Um, extremely small bezels. Um, Moto Z here, which is a newer phone, which you'd expect probably is. It's not part of this new 18.9 display or 18 by 9 like Galaxy and LG G6 stuff like that display. But this, the bezels on this phone are extremely, extremely small. Look here, both 5.5 inches, but you can see how taller the Moto Z is. It's a good light. Maybe like an inch taller. I don't know. I don't have a ruler with me. My eyes aren't a ruler, unfortunately. Um, if you go, yeah. So that's just front down. You've got front facing camera, which is a five megapixels. From no, sorry, it's a two megapixel camera. I think that's what my. I'm just reading off my computer. Um, so you've got two megapixels. You've got your sensors, earpiece. Call quality is really good on this phone. No problem with it at all. Um, LG logo and like shiny reflective spinning material like the back of the LG Stylus 2 which I have reviewed. Um, if you go to the top you have a microphone. Camera wants to focus. Got on, camera focus. There you go. So you have a microphone here and an IR blaster which I have used on my TV and it works fine. Um, on the back you have laser autofocus. Camera wants to focus on it. You go, so you have laser autofocus, have 13 megapixel rear facing camera, um, dual tone LED flash, you have your power button, volume up, volume down, LG logo, and a speaker. On the bottom, you have a micro USB port, camera still doesn't want to focus. Uh, yes, yeah, so you have micro USB, headphone jack, and also another microphone. Um, so apart from that, that is really I think of the exterior of the phone. What I do like about the buttons on the back is they fall naturally where your fingers are. So there's no need to move around all the way to the top or halfway down or to the sides to do your power buttons. Keeps the sides nice, sleek, clean and the phone does look sexy.
for a four year old phone it does still look nice and sexy and clean um, the back is a plastic back unfortunately but it does have a nice brushed metal look and if your hands are really sweaty it doesn't get like all um, like greasy and slippery so um, you just go over generally about the phone, phone's performance it has held up well it has Android 6.0 if I just find the settings app open it up I haven't really noticed that much slowdowns in it phone's still fast um, so yeah, if I show you here we are running Android 6.0 with a 2016 8th of the first security patch or first of the 8th, I'm not sure um, yeah, that's basically it so if you go generally, the reason why I still use this phone is it's just purely amazing there's everything about it, it's just nice if you go to the camera, which is another good part of the phone if I just go up here do a video, take a photo Camera is really nice. Display is good. Um, so you have a 13 megapixel camera. It's probably isn't the best you can take a photo of. But if you zoom in, you've got good quality. It does get a bit blurry, but overall camera quality is really good looking. You have good saturation and colour differences. It's very good exposure. That's what I meant to say. You can see the blacks are really nice, dark and black. The whites nice and black. The green very really does like show out. But it does in the camera. If I show you on this camera here. And see how it shows. You can see a difference in camera quality between the two. It's just like life. But come back to where it was. Um, yeah, so if you go back and if you go into settings, you can change if you want a grid, timer, what size you want your camera to be, so you can have Ultra HD, Full HD, if it wants to focus. Um, HDR Auto, you can turn your flash, everything like that. Switch camera. Slow, it's taking some time. So it does have a beauty effect here on the bottom. I don't really like to use it, it just makes it look really fake. Um but hello. <laughs> camera quality for a fun megapixel it, camera is good, but it's nothing amazing. It's not gonna blow out the park like other cameras do. So um just go into what? Just go into YouTube. Bring up something. Just bring up my this video here, you'll see the speed quality. It's as good as the it's about the same as one of the LG stylus. Go way up. It is so it's one a Blackboard OS ten. It's a rear facing speaker, so if you cover it up it was one of the last it's not very good. If you cover your hand you can make that bit of a thing. I don't know what you say, but it's quite good, so if you just take a listen and I'll see you in a minute. Comparing it to a more modern device, for example, the Moto Z, which is a 2016 flagship from Motorola. Which is an absolutely great phone. But, um, that's so, yeah, that's basically what it sounds like. It's nice, clear quality. Um, doesn't really get that much distorted. But if you look at the speaker grill here, quite a small little slit. But if you open it up, it's quite a big speaker grill, so I don't know why we just didn't make... If you look at the size, yeah, see how much of the actual speaker's been covered up. I don't know why we did it like that. I don't know. So, um, I'm going to talk to you about performance briefly. So, um, the performance of this phone is good. It has quad-core, so it's not the slowest, it's not the fastest. But games like FIFA Mobile, they all run perfect. It does take some time to load up. Um, let's just open up Monument Valley. You can see that. Um, if you're going to Battery Life now while I'm waiting for this, um, it will good. It can last you a day. If you really stretch it, it can last you a day and a half. But if you really go do full power, and if you watch videos on YouTube in 2K, 1080p, 1440p, everything like that, it will drain the battery. But I normally, when I'm using this phone, I'm normally hitting the charger again at night at about 10ish. I wake up at about half nine, ten o'clock. So and I get, I'm getting about four to four and a half to five hours of screen on time. Depends how I use it. If I don't really use it that often, it will last. I don't know a couple of days. So um, the past week, 
I've had it on my shelf. I haven't used it. I haven't actually charged it today. If you go into the settings and have a look at the battery. We have... I don't actually know. It doesn't say how much percentage I have. I don't know. So it's saying I have an estimated time remaining of 94 hours, 41 minutes. So I've used 20% of the battery in the last three hours. But in the last three hours I have been using watching YouTube on it. My phone died. It's been charging. That's annoying. Um, so I've just been charging it. No, not charging it. I've given a little charge. Like five minutes. It doesn't have fast charge, unfortunately. So that's basically it. So would I recommend this phone? Yes, I would. If you're looking for a cheap alternative for um, if you're looking for a cheap phone, maybe the backup phone, something like that, I would recommend it. But if you want that as your main phone, I wouldn't recommend it. To be honest, I'd go something like an LG G5 or as good phones out as the next bit Robin, as a Moto G5 for around about the same price. I got this phone um, about four hundred fifty pounds when it first released. Um, but now you can buy it for about 150 quid second hand. But you can get other phones cheap like that, which are still amazing quality. You can get the Moto G5, which is about the same price. It's newer specs and has a new operating system. So I would recommend this phone, but I wouldn't recommend it as your main daily driver. So um, guys, thank you for watching. And this is Adam, and I'm signing out. Goodbye.